She was the daughter of a greengrocer in Lincolnshire, but her influence on British politics is unmatched. Margaret Thatcher was elected to Parliament for the first time in 1959, and there was already talk of a job on the front bench. Well, I think we'll just try to be a very good backbencher first. Certainly until these two are a little older, I couldn't take on any more political responsibilities. From softly spoken housewife to Iron Lady, she rose quickly through the ranks. This chap Callaghan must go. I stand before you tonight, the Iron Lady of the Western World. By the late 1970s, she was Tory party leader. Mrs Thatcher, the morning after your election, how do you feel about it now? Well, perfectly all right, perfectly all right. There's so much to be done. Mrs Thatcher was ready for government. I presume this is to enable us to sweep Britain clean of socialism. She won a landslide election victory in 1979 and had a clear message for the people of Britain. Her Majesty the Queen has asked me to form a new administration and I have accepted. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. But in trying to fix the economy, the Prime Minister found herself on a collision course with some of the country's most powerful unions. Mrs Thatcher went on the offensive and couldn't be budged. The ladies not for turning. She was steadfast abroad too. When Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands in 1982, she sent troops to take them back. We have ceased to be a nation in retreat. With her re-election secured, the Iron Lady turned her attention to another enemy, this time on the home front. She defeated the miners' union and ended a way of life for thousands. 1984, Great Britain. 1984 was a turbulent year for the Prime Minister. Hunger strikes and the death of Bobby Sands prompted an IRA attempt on her life. A bomb exploded at Brighton's Grand Hotel. You hear about these atrocities, these bombs. You don't expect them to happen to you. By the mid-80s, the economy was booming, though, and Thatcherism appeared to be working. Abroad, she formed a close relationship with Ronald Reagan. Both played important roles in ending the Cold War. The talks have been very deep, very wide-ranging and you. very friendly. And as always, we got to grips with the real issues. Mrs Thatcher won a third successive election, previously unheard of in British politics. It is wonderful to be entrusted with the government of this country, this great country, once again. But was Thatcherism about to fall apart? She was told it would be unpopular, but she ploughed on with her poll tax plan anyway, while her party became deeply divided over Europe. No, no, no. Ministers resigned, Michael Heseltine launched a leadership challenge, and the Iron Lady saw her support melt away. I most earnestly believe that I shall be in number 10 Downing Street at the end of this week. Mrs Thatcher, when are you going to resign? Mrs Thatcher left Downing Street in 1990, undefeated in the polls. We're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years, and we're very happy that we leave the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. Margaret Thatcher paved the way for political change in the UK. Some believe even New Labour owed its existence to Thatcherism. She remained a divisive figure in retirement, but public interest in her never waned. She was even the subject of a blockbuster film. Your problem is that you haven't got the courage for this fight. The Iron Lady showed Mrs Thatcher as a strong woman who needed thick skin and with satire-like spitting image around at the time, she needed it. And what about the vegetables? Oh, they'll have the same as me. Mrs Thatcher could always look back on a unique set of achievements. She was the UK's first female Prime Minister. She won three successive elections and she left a legacy that shaped politics.